Okay, now here here for our final lecture in thermochemistry, and moving on, we're going to talk about standard states. So standard states. Uh, what are standard states? Uh, so I told you that things are path independent in thermodynamics. So uh, someone was kind enough to go through with a fair bit of government grant funding, of course, and went and calculated out. Um, anything we pick the standard states. So we picked a standard state, and then every, someone has gone and calculated it all out. So that way you don't have to do it. So uh, you can just use the exact differential sta uh, state of the uh, of the state functions, and uh, you can calculate things. And this is a standard state uh, for for us, the United States. Uh, Russia had a different standard state. I don't know if they changed theirs, but we started collaborating with them in the space program. And lo and behold, we found out they had this different standard state than they did. Theirs actually makes better sense than ours. We use an atmosphere of pressure for our standard pressure. Uh, they use a, t a pressure of one bar, uh, which is it's close to us. Uh, it's atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. A bar is 100 kilopascals. But uh, we flexed our, flexed our superpower muscles, and now Russia has gone to our standard state. So a very, very proud win for the United States of America there. I don't know what temperature they used, though, in Russia. I, I'm not sure. We use 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, but anyways, okay, so standard state for a gas, it's the pure gas at one atmosphere here in the United States. Uh, and the first world. Uh, Russia... In the second world, I, actually, I don't know what China does. Maybe they, uh, I don't know what they do, to be honest with you. Okay, but for liquids or solids, uh, we have one molar. So it's the most stable form at a pressure one atmosphere and temperature of interest, usually 25 degrees Celsius. And uh, it's, so like, um, let's take carbon, for instance. Carbon can be diamond, it can be graphite, it can be C60, C70. Uh, we pick it to be graphite because that's the most common and easiest to deal with. Uh, and then for some in solution, it's a um, concentration of one molar. And the standard enthalpy change, this is the enthalpy change for a process when everything is in their standard states. That degree sign indicates the standard state. And then the enthalpy, standard enthalpy of formation, uh, this is a definition for a pure compound. It's when one mole of the compound is made from its constituent elements. And a, and a uh, standard state for the pure elements is zero. Uh, so uh, one thing about enthalpy, enthalpy H is a relative term. So remember like degree Celsius. Degree Celsius is a relative term. Uh, now um, Kelvin is not relative. Kelvin is absolute. So there are some things that are absolute. Kelvin temperature is an absolute thing. Uh, entropy S is another one. We don't talk about entropy uh, really until the next semester, but that is an absolute term. Uh, there is nothing below zero entropy. There is no temperature below zero Kelvin. So, but uh, now for enthalpy H, our zero we pick as the elements. So it is in fact a relative term. So keep that in mind. And here, here are these heats of formation there. Uh, this is an incomplete list. Of course, there are a lot more. And, and notice a couple of things like oxygen here. Oxygen, o, O2 is the atmosphere. We have that. That's the element. We put zero. O, O3, ozone, is also elemental oxygen, but it's in, it's, it's in relation to O2. So we pick the centered states there. And one thing to note, so just notation, if you have this sigma, that means sum, you might see a capital pi. That's known as a uh, geometric series. So like, uh, so pi, n equals one to five, and one over n, that means one over one times one over two times one over three times one over four times one over five. And then the, the sigma, capital sigma, this is a sum. The same thing with one over n, this is one over one plus one over two plus one over three plus one over four plus one over five. So for the heat of reaction, this is the sum of the moles of products heat of formation of the products minus the sum of the moles of reactants times the heat of formation of reactants. So 
Use the standard enthalpies. Let's apply this to this example. Use the standard enthalpy as a formation to determine the heat of a reaction, the standard heat of reaction for this reaction here. So, oh, I already put it in there. Whoops. All right, well, uh, it's products minus reactants. So applying this equation here, let me do, I like blue better. So we have four times the heat of formation of NO plus six times the heat of formation of H2O gas minus the quantity four times the heat of formation of ammonia plus five times the heat of formation of O2. Okay, so uh, where I, I'm applying this equation. Notice I have products on the left and reactants on the right, just like it's written here. And then the stoichiometric ratios are what I'm using to multiply that. Now we just have to put the numbers in. So first of all, though, notice that the heat of formation of oxygen, I've already noted that, is zero. So we do not include that one. And another thing is to make sure that it's water vapor because water liquid and water vapor are two different things. So I can zoom out and look at these numbers. So four times the heat of formation of NO, where is NO? I'll zoom back in so you can see a little bit better. Where is NO? It is right here, 91.3. 91.3 plus 6 heat of formation of water gas so water vapor right there is minus 241.8 minus 241.8 and I need a little more space here minus 4 times the heat of formation of Oh geez, I did the NO. Oh wait, wait the four times emission. Yeah, that's ammonia. Okay, heat of formation of ammonia is minus forty-five point nine. Minus forty-five point nine, like that. And then we plug that in to our calculators. And we get minus 902.0 kilojoules per mole. I don't see the fourth sig fig where they. Eh. I'm disagreeing with the book here. I think I see only three sig figs. But okay. Like there, like that. Okay. And so recap for this one, we apply the equation, the heat of standard heat of reaction is the moles of products, uh, heat of formation of products minus the sum of the moles of reactants, heat of formation of reactants. We apply it, uh, noting that the heat of formation of the elemental oxygen is zero and making sure that we have the right ones using, using water vapor instead of liquid water, we get the minus 902 kilojoules per mole for this reaction. So let's see if you can do this. This is known as the thermite reaction. So a thermite reaction and uh, aluminum is, a, is an element, so is iron. I know it would be liquid iron, it would be solid iron, but this is, hey, chemistry class, why not? Okay, so how do you solve this one? Same idea, let's see if you can solve it. And so it's products minus reactants. So it's gonna be one, so it's 
minus 1600 minus a minus 800 is going to be 800 so a negative 800 so it's it's a okay and now on to more fun things well hopefully you enjoyed thermochemistry but i i'm a big fan of quantum mechanics so see you next time